What's up guys and happy 2020. Brian Lebo here with your January market update video. Now I am super excited for today's video since there's actually a ton to cover. Now, first off, I'm sure most of you have heard that the crash is coming or the Raiders are coming and values are gonna go through the roof. Ultimately, there's a counter argument for just about every prediction out there right now. As usual, there's really no black and white here. The truth is much more complicated at the moment. So today we're going to recap 2019 and see how the year turned out. Then we'll cover last month's numbers and attempt to make some sense out of all this and then make some predictions for this year. Okay, first up, let's chat about 2019. What appeared to be a flat year wound up making one hell of a recovery at the end. Now, on one hand, sales were disappointing. We sold 29,319 homes last year. This was a 1.6% reduction in sales from 2018. This was the first declining sales year we've had since back in 2013. Now, on the other hand, due to the surge in the fourth quarter last year, we wound up with a median price of $300,000. This surprisingly turned out to be, or I'm sorry, 310,000. This turned out to be a 6.7% increase over last year's median price of just over $290,000. Now, considering normal appreciation in Las Vegas is only 4%, you have to be pleased with a 6.7% increase. This also means I was wrong when I predicted only a 4 to 5% increase for the year. So even though sales were disappointing, normal people only really care about the prices of homes. So that's a huge win for Vegas. One huge second half surprise had to do with the loss of inventory. We ended last year with just under 7,000 homes on the market. When I last year, I mean 2018. Meanwhile, this year ending 2019, we ended up just under 6,000 for a 15% reduction in inventory. Now we'll cover this in more depth later in the video. But first, let's quickly recap what happened last month before putting all of this back together. First up are last month's sales. Last month we sold 2,377 homes. This was huge, and I mean huge. This was a 23% increase over last year's December sales. Next is everyone's favorite subject, median home prices. As you can see on the screen right now, we managed to pull ourselves back up to $310,000, as I had mentioned earlier in the video. Ironically, we actually hit that number back in September, but then we kind of recessed back the next couple months after that. While this represents a 6.7% increase, 6 increase over the median price the same time the previous year, it's not really as amazing as it sounds. I'll explain all this later in the video. Last but not least, let's look at our inventory levels. We ended December with only 5,812 homes on the market. This now marks a decline in inventory for 25 out of the past 27 weeks. Put even more simply, in the past six months, there's only been two weeks where the inventory actually increased. To add further context, one week we added only 79 homes, and the other week we added only 26 homes. I can also share that the first two weeks of this year is absolutely no exception. In just two weeks, we're down almost 400 homes. So it's more than fair to say that our declining inventory is a huge trend right now. All right, now that we got a whole bunch of numbers out there, what in the hell does all of this actually mean to us? First, let's chat about this median price situation. When I tell you that prices went up 6.7%, you're imagining a nice line like this, right? Well, the actual truth is much more deceptive. Let's look once again at the appreciation chart, but now this time, let's go back all the way to November of 2018. When we go back to December of 18, you can see that prices actually fell 1.5% down to just over 290,000 to end 2018. This was just a temporary drop that most years never see. Then look at January of last year. Prices shot up 3.2% up to almost $300,000. Now, it made January look like we were going to have a 20% appreciation year, 
But in reality, all of this had to do with just a bad December of 2018. Since January of last year, the home values only went up $10,000. Truth be told, most of the year saw little to no appreciation, especially during the most valuable summer months. By June, we were still at January's $300,000 mark. Now, by the end of summer, we only hit 305. So if you look at it a different way, from January to December, we only saw a 3.3% increase in median home prices. Personally, I think this is a much more accurate depiction of the year, but hey, I know that's not sexy at all, and it sure as hell doesn't sell advertising, so whatever. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. This to me is the most important metric for 2020, our inventory issue. Remember the law of supply and demand. If supply is low and demand is steady, then what happens? Prices rise. This is precisely what happened back in 2011 during the foreclosure law changes. We had halted foreclosures, which created a huge drop in inventory. Steady demand dictated an increase in values, and due to those increases in values, investors just came out of the woodworks to take advantage of cheap prices and generous rental rates. This created even more demand while inventory was just stuck in purgatory. Now, this year is very different than 2011. In some ways, complete opposite. Prices are higher overall, and rental rates are less generous by comparison. In real estate parlance, we call this a cap rate. So even if prices were to blow up, not really that many investors are gonna be purchasing since the rents are still too low for it to pencil out and make sense. We've seen less and less investors over the past few years due to less generous cap rates. But again, what does this inventory mean? Well, according to general consensus, a balanced market is an inventory of between five to seven months, uh, supply of homes, I should say. Now, considering we average about 2,500 home sales a month, this would equate to 12 to 17,000 homes on the market. As we discussed earlier, we only have less than 6,000 homes on the market, which is about two and a half months supply. Now, while this dictates a huge seller's market, any seller out there will tell you this simply is not the case. Rarely do you see homes with multiple offers, let alone the old days of 20 offers on the table. Like I've covered before, we live in two worlds, homes say under $350,000 and then the homes over $350,000. On a national level, there's a shortage of affordable housing everywhere. Meanwhile, the higher the price, the oversaturation we find of supply. $900,000 resale homes are directly competing with brand new homes, and essentially there's like 10 times less demand than their counterparts at that price range. So what does all of this mean? With new homes so much more expensive than their resale counterparts, many homeowners now are simply remodeling their homes instead of purchasing new homes. This is a fairly new phenomenon in Las Vegas. And as a result, less and less homeowners are able to put their home up for sale. This is one explanation for our decreased inventory while also having decreased sales. Normally you see decreased inventory because of just too many sales going on. Going into this year, I think keeping a really close eye on the inventory levels is going to dictate home appreciation. While it clinically is a seller's market, it feels much more balanced than ever before. But if we continue to, to lose inventory like we are, prices are likely to rise as a result. Again, simple supply and demand. I don't foresee anything crazy on the horizon, but you could see some appreciation this late spring or summer if inventory continues to decrease. And while people are claiming prices are just too high and we're going to see a pullback, remember two things. First, we peaked at $315,000 14 years ago. In today's currency, that's $400,000. So you can't really claim that we're overpriced when we haven't even recovered, let alone recovered adjusted for inflation. Second, as long as we're next to California, we'll never stop receiving a net positive immigration number. And to Californians, we're cheap. 
So as long as we have net positive migration, we can support the home value increases. Now, having said all this, I'd really like to say we'd see around 5% appreciation this year. That sounds perfectly rational. But the truth is that real estate is rarely linear, right? If inventory continues this trend, don't be surprised to see 5 to 10% appreciation this year. Already in the first two weeks in January have been super robust compared to other years. It really looks like buyers came out just swinging already. So in no circumstance other than war or economic collapse do I see home values stagnant or declining this year. After the election though, man, all bets are off. Well, that's it for this month's long ass video. Thank you all for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and have a wonderful January, everyone. I'll see you next month. Thank you.